How's it going everyone? I'm Jay Gex and this is my analysis on the Eve Echoes economy for the month of April. Hope you enjoy. The first thing we'll cover in this market analysis for the month of April is the mineral prices at GEDA. Taking a look at Tritanium, we can see it's at 3 isk right now, and it's been at 3 isk for pretty much the entire duration of this game for sell orders at GEDA. Now, the buy orders earlier this month started pushing up to the 3 and 4 isk range. These buy orders at GEDA are what's going to eventually push Tritanium up to that 4 isk mark, and when it hits that mark, it's going to change the prices of all the ships in the game because whether it's a small ship, a big ship, you're looking at at least a million Tritanium, and for the big faction ships, you're talking upwards of 70 to 100 million isk for a battleship or a faction battleship. And so when, when you're talking about Tritanium, one isk makes a big difference, and we almost hit that at the beginning of April. But as you can see, it's kind of dropped back down to two isk, and so we're going to stay at three isk for a little bit longer. But Tritanium could be going up to four isk at some point, especially with the tier 10 ships coming around soon. Looking at the other minerals, Pyrite, Mixalion, and Isogen have all fallen in price earlier in the month, but for the past two weeks have been pretty stable at their current prices. Then, looking at the bottom of this list with the higher tier minerals, Noxium, Zydrine, Megasite, and Morphite, you can see that Zydrine was the only one of the minerals that was trending upward earlier in this month. However, in the past three or four days, all of these higher tier minerals have gone up slightly in price. Noxium's gone up about 100 isk, Zydrine's gone up about 200 isk, Megasite is around 3,000 isk right now, so that's about 700 isk more, and Morphite's doubled in price. Now, the price of Morphite is entirely speculative because it's currently not used in any blueprints in the game. Now we'll take a look at the ore prices. What you're seeing is the break-even value if you have 554 skills in reprocessing that specific type of ore. Uh, that's 5 basic, 5 advanced, and 4 expert skill points into that specific type of ore. Now, the reason I chose to show 554 as the max rank is because going that 5th expert skill point is most of the time not really worth it, unless you're doing it on alts or your gameplay revolves around doing nothing but reprocessing ore and flipping it on the market, then I could understand going 555. But besides that, you're looking at two to four months of skill points needed for that last skill point that only gives you about a 1.5% boost. And in my eyes, even running a corp, it's not even worth it to go that extra skill point unless it's specifically on an alt that is for reprocessing. If you don't have that max skill point that we're looking at here, you can see that at five, four skill points, you're looking at 75% of these values. And if you have no reprocessing skill points, all of these values would be cut in half. So that's what you should be looking at. And if you're somewhere in between, then the price would just be somewhere in between. So you can use these numbers to determine if you should either be buying the ore and reprocessing it yourself, or just buying the minerals off the market. The last thing we'll look at with this report for mid-April when it comes to the ore and minerals is the tier chart. And with this, you can quickly see the differences between mining in high sec, low sec, and null sec. Clearly, you're going to make more in null sec. However, null sec is the riskiest place to mine. And without a well-established null sec corp and alliance, you're not really going to be able to haul all of your stuff back to high sec to be able to sell it. You're going to most likely need to be reprocessing it on the spot and hauling the minerals back. So while null sec is the best on paper, it does come with a lot of downsides. And so that's why a lot of people just choose to mine AFK and high sec which is a fine way to play, especially if you're playing while you're busy doing something else like working or watching kids. But just know you're making about one third of what the people in NullSec are making. So for every three trips you make, that's one trip in NullSec. And when it comes to targeting specific ores like you see here on the tier chart, you really can't target specific ores unless you're in a venture. If you're in a retriever or a procurer, one of the strip mining ships, you really can't target your ores. But you can make sure to park yourself in a way that only the good ores are in range of your strip miners. So you want to make sure if you're out there in null sec, mining in a procure or retriever, that you don't have any Veldspar or Scordite or any of those, those low tier minerals that you see in high sec that are also in null sec. You want to avoid those. So make sure if you want to get the most out of your mining, that if you're in one of those mining barges, you're positioning yourself so you're only targeting the valuable ore in your range. Or if you're in a venture, then feel free to use this tier chart as best fit. The last thing to touch on with this tier chart 
is yes, Peroxeries and Dark Ochre are available in high sec, but they're only in certain 0.5 systems that have the tier four anomalies and tier four belts. If they don't have tier four belts and anomalies, you're not gonna find Dark Ochre or Peroxeries and not every 0.5 system in high sec has tier four belts. And so that's why you see Peroxeries and Dark Ochre are listed in low sec, but yes, you can get them in some high sec systems. Looking at the planetary material tier chart for the month of April, you can see the S tier, the best planetary materials you can be mining for are gonna be your noble metals, crystal compound, precious alloy, silicate glass, condensed alloy, or smart fab units. The biggest surprise in the S tier is noble metals. Uh, it, it shot up in price and it's only used for Minmatar and Kaldari ships. So what that's telling me is right now, either Minmatar or Kaldari ships or both are strong favorite ships right now at tier nine, as that's what is the most common used PI for those type of blueprints. When you get to crystal compound, precious alloy, those ones are used in all of the faction ships as well as all the battleships. So those make sense that they're up on the S tier. They're just in demand right now because everyone's trying to make those tier nine battleships or making those faction ships still. And then with silicate glass and smart fab units, those are two limiting factors in a lot of the different blueprints for structures. So those make sense that they're in the S tier right now. And condensed alloy, uh, condensed alloy is only used for industrial ships and faction ships. And that makes sense that it's in the S tier right now because with tier nine, we got the procurer and every miner out there has their eyes set on that procurer as the best mining ship in the game right now. And so that's what has pushed condensed alloy up into S tier. Now at A tier for planetary materials, we start off with construction blocks. It's a little confusing because smart fab units and construction blocks have the same image, but just know the one in A tier is construction blocks, but they are very close. They are cut off right at, in between each other. But then you have gleaming alloy, dark compound, heavy metals, coolant, and industrial fibers to round out your A tier. Now for these A tier planetary materials, construction blocks, coolant, and industrial fibers are all heavily used in all the structures in the game right now. So them being an A tier makes sense because there are still a lot of people trying to push out capsular outpost because those PI modules really do give you a lot of benefit. And it's something I'm gonna cover here in this video here shortly. But looking at the other ones, gleaming alloy and heavy metals, those ones, they've always been A or B tier. They kind of hover in between. And dark compound just kind of came out of nowhere recently. Uh, it's, it's not used for a whole lot when it comes to making ships, but it is used a lot in making modules and other things like that, drones um, and different group modules. So that's where the dark compound comes into use. I'm surprised it's in A tier, um, but the rest usually are in A or B tier. Once we get to the B tier, we start getting into the planetary materials that don't have much demand but are still useful. Uh, Lucian compound is only used for destroyer ships and destroyers aren't really used that much in the game So that's why it kind of sits there in B tier same with motley compound motley compounds only used in tier 5 and below ships So there's not really much use for motley compound once you get into the higher tiers of the game C tier is where we start seeing our fuels start to show up fuels recently had a big bump in price Thanks to the compression they added into the game Although compression came with a lot of mixed reviews, so the fuel kind of spiked and then plateaued off. We'll see now that they announced the command burst modules coming soon we'll, that use fuel. I think fuel will go up even farther now with command burst modules coming into the game. When we get down to the D tier, we just get into the planetary materials that don't have a lot of uses or demand. Uh, fiber composite, the one in the middle, that one's only used for frigates and all frigate blueprints have a low material requirements, so you never really need too many fiber composites, and that's why they've always been in D tier. Lustering alloy and base metal there at the end are only used in tier five and below, and most players are well past tier five now, so only newer players are using those materials, so there's not too much demand. And then you just have some bad fuels in there. The fuels that have uh, a low amount of energy per unit that just take up a lot of cargo room, and those are the, the three fuels that you're not really gonna fit onto your ship for a command burst module or a group module or an interdictor bubble. Those are the fuels that you're just gonna put straight into your capsuleer outpost or corp outpost to fuel that. And there's just not much demand. 
Now we'll look at the changes to the tier chart over the past two weeks. You can see at number one going up three tiers is condensed alloy, and that's due to procurers using a lot of condensed alloy, and any miner that hits tier nine is looking to be in a procurer as soon as possible. Then jumping up two tiers on the chart this month is crystal compound and industrial fibers. Crystal compounds used in all battleships, and industrial fiber is heavily used in the planetary material module for the capsular outpost. And so those are the reasons that you're seeing those jump up two tiers since earlier this month. The planetary materials that have gone up or down one tier is usually just due to small price changes, so there's nothing really major to cover there. Uh, the ones at minus two and minus three tiers are all structural materials, and so I'm not sure why they dropped so low recently. I know a lot of corps out in NullSec, once they get their one corp outpost, there's really no reason to have another one other than claiming sovereignty over certain systems. So it could be that people are just not shooting to build those corp outposts anymore. Uh, but yeah, we have three structural materials that have all fallen pretty hard on the tier list, and that's something to keep in mind. The last thing we'll look at is the price column on the right. This shows early April averages, mid-April averages, their changes, and the percent change. And it's sorted by percent change, because that's what really shows how much it's moved, because that's based off of its original price. And so we see at the top of the list, it's mostly all of the fuels that have gone up due to the compression being announced, and now we're going to go up even further thanks to the command burst modules coming into the game soon. The other thing, condensed alloy up there is number two. Like we said, that's all due to the Procurer right now being the number one mining ship as condensed alloys only used in mining ships and faction ships. Uh, the rest you can see, small movements throughout like you always see. And at the bottom, it's a lot of the structure materials. Structure materials in general have fallen. Pretty much all of them outside of industrial fibers have gone down considerably. And that's, to me, telling that there's not many corp outposts being built, and most people, if they are building structures, are building capsuleer outposts to use for the PI module and some of the future modules they've announced, but we don't know when they're going to come out. Thanks for watching my video. I'm going to be doing these Eve Echoes economy reports every two weeks. I'm going to post them on Reddit as well as YouTube. I'm going to make sure they're posted around the same time from here on out. Getting the content started again, they were a little bit more spaced out than I'd like them to be. But from here on out, every two weeks, we're going to be doing economy reports. And then in between, I'm going to start releasing things on corp buyback, corp management, and a lot of other things in the game that no one's really covered yet. So thanks for watching the video. Subscribe if you like it, and have a good one.